Hello, my friends. Today, we're going to be talking about modifying graphics in Adobe Illustrator. The worksheet on the screen today is going to give you the opportunity to practice some of these tools that I've listed for you over here on the directions page. When we're using these, it's important to understand that you have more options to adjust graphics, whether they be raster graphics like these that I've given for you, or a vector graphic like this one down here, than just using your selection tool. There's a lot of different opportunities for you, and we're going to go through some of these today. I'm not going to go through all of them because most of the instructions are very similar for each one. It's just how they behave is slightly different, but I am going to go through a few with you just to kind of get you the general idea. Across the top for each box, it's going to tell you which tool you should be using, along with what special effect you should be adding for the far column on the right. And we're going to talk about effects today as well. The other thing that we're going to be covering is how to use the perspective tool. The perspective grid tool is very neat, but can be very overwhelming the first time you use it. So we're going to go through that today as well. First, let's go ahead and go through the first row, and then we will do the perspective after that. First, we're going to start with the shear tool. In the directions on the left-hand side, I've given you a screenshot of the tools panel pop-outs so that you can see where some of these tools live along with what the keyboard shortcuts are. Unfortunately, not all of these have keyboard shortcuts because there is a limit to how many that Adobe can add, but what they've done is they've given the ones that are the most effective to have a keyboard shortcut tool for, like the scale tool, the rotate tool, the width tool, things like that. But we're going to start today with the shear tool. The shear tool is located under the scale tool and it's right here. With this tool, you do have to have your object selected first with your selection tool in order to use it. You can't just click on something to activate it. But what we're going to do with this one is the shear tool allows you to literally change the shear or the kind of proportion scale of an object. You can really do a lot or you can do very subtle things. And this kind of allows you to kind of warp the distort um, and change the perspective on a graphic. For number two, you'll notice the box is empty because we're gonna use the width tool. For this, I'm gonna ask you to draw a circle, a rectangle. I think my directions say a circle, but what we're gonna do is, yep, draw a circle with a stroke on it. So I'm just gonna draw a perfect circle and I'm gonna zoom in so you guys can see a little bit better. And I'm gonna put a stroke of about five on this for today. The fill color doesn't matter because we're not really gonna be paying attention to that because we're just paying attention to the stroke. The width tool allows you to make adjustments to the stroke of an object. So we're gonna activate the width tool and it's over here and it is shift W on your keyboard. We're gonna take this tool and we are gonna be able to click on a stroke and you'll see I basically have the ability to add an anchor point. And now I can click and pull the width out independently at a specific point that I want to do. So I can add more than one. I can pull in points. I can take points and curve them around. And you have the ability to create really interesting stroke widths that you don't have the ability to do with the width profile. Remember that you do have the width profile to choose from, but this is going to allow you to get a lot more creative. Once you're done with the width tool, you will be able to use it for lots of other things other than just being able to use on a circle. You can also use a pin tool line if you want. You can do complicated lines, open paths, anything like that. And you can also adjust the width on an individual line as well. So that gives you some interesting opportunities to make some really neat objects. If you want it to stop being a path, you just go to the object menu and expand your appearance. And now you can manipulate direct points if you want to change things. For number three, we're going to use the rotate tool, which is right here, and it's R on our keyboard for rotate. And what's neat about this tool is you can grab in the corner here and rotate, and you don't have to worry about moving anything. Sometimes this is easier than trying to do the transform rotate, because maybe you don't understand exactly the right angle that you need, and you need to visualize it and see it happening. So the rotate tool is a great opportunity for that. Um, with any of these tools, you can double click on the tool to activate the command panel that's going to give you more options, which is really, really convenient when you're doing things. So if you needed to be more specific about something, you could double click on most of these tools in order to activate extra options like the shear tool, um, things like that. The other thing that I've asked for you to do on the rotate tool is to add a drop shadow. So let's talk about the effects menu. 
The effects menu is here at the top and you're going to have two sections of effects. We have Illustrator effects and Photoshop effects. These effects from Photoshop um, are the same ones that are in Photoshop that we'll cover when we get to that unit, but it just lets you have some other options. But we're going to talk about the stylized section of the effects and everything that I'm asking you to do is located under this stylized. Make sure that you don't go down here to this bottom one and you just stay in the Illustrator effects. Some of my favorite effects, just to get, tell you, is the blur menu. I use the Gaussian blur especially quite often. I also use the distort and transform. We did that one when we were doing the um, basic shapes worksheet. And then I also use the path, offset, path, offset, outline strokes, and things like that. So you have some really nice options in here, but we're going to start with the drop shadow. When you choose the drop shadow, you do the, get this command window, and I've got my preview checked on so that I can see things as I change them. You, I will say that the drop shadow options in Illustrator are a little bit more limited than they are in Photoshop. In Photoshop, you have the ability to rotate an angle, where on this one, you have to use the X and the Y offset. So this is the default here. One of the things that I always pay attention to is the higher my drop shadow goes, and I'll show you what I mean by this. And that's what I mean is you see it's moving. Um, the more it should be blurred. That's the further away you from um, your source of your surface, the softer your um, blur should be. So if I get really close, which I'm going to change these numbers to show you what I mean, I would want to take my blur down to like a one or a two because I want it to be a much firmer edge. And a two is going to be what we want. Um, and you'll see that that looks like it's closer to the surface. The other thing that you can do is you can change these to negative numbers to change the direction of, and you'll see it popped this way, and then I'm gonna put a negative number here and hit tab, and it's gonna adjust the, the orientation. So you do have some choices in here, along with the opacity. So you can adjust the opacity and reduce how much of that blur is visible. I'm going to put it back to 75 because that's kind of a good, that's a good place in my opinion. And I'm going to say, okay. One of the ways that we can look and make sure that we've got everything set up the way we want to is if we use the appearance panel. So window appearance, I've got mine out here. And the appearance panel, whenever you select an object, it's always going to show you what's set on that object. So for this is the drop shadow. It's an image. It's got a default opacity. Anything, remember, that is underlined in the program, you have the ability to click on and adjust. So if I've changed my mind about this and I want the orientation to change, I don't have to delete it and start over. I can just adjust my drop shadow and it automatically fixes it. The other nice thing about this is I can actually hide effects or I can straight delete effects. So the appearance panel is a great panel to be aware of. Let's go ahead and talk about the perspective. I've actually created a new document for us to do this on because there's so much going on in this one. When I turn on that perspective, you're going to not be able to see as well as you would like to be able to see. So we're going to switch to a separate file that I can manipulate and use. The perspective panel is shift P on your keyboard. When you use shift P, it is going to activate this crazy looking grid. A lot of students accidentally get themselves into this perspective grid because they hit shift P rather than maybe P for the pen tool or shift V rather than V for the selection tool. So these two tools do work together and we're going to talk about how to use these and how to manipulate things on this perspective. On the grid, you're going to see it's color coded. We have a blue, an orange, and greens. One of the things is up here, you can flip and change between the grids. But before we do that, I want to show you that you can actually change your grid to be what you need it to be. So if you need your perspective grid to be a little bit different orientation than the default, you can drag these circles around in order to get exactly what you need them to be. You can unfold things, fold things. You have a lot of potential here for manipulating your grid, okay? It's just really convenient in my opinion. In order, if you get yourself into this by accident, you do have the ability to turn off the grid. You have to be on the perspective grid tool or the perspective selection tool in order to turn it off. And what you'll see is if I hover my mouse over that, it'll say hide grid, okay? That's important because a lot of people get this turned on by accident and then don't know how to get it back on. 
If you double click on here, you can also adjust a couple of things like the intersections. You can change where the widget, which is what this is, goes. But for today, we're just gonna leave it the way it is. I'm gonna try to get this back the way it was. There it goes, I was grabbing the wrong one. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put some stuff on our perspective. I've asked you to do your name and I'm gonna show you how I do that, but I'm also gonna show you how I put other objects on here as well. But first, I'm gonna to switch to the perspective selection tool. This is the tool that's gonna to actually allow me to place objects. I'm gonna turn on my text tool or my type tool, excuse me, and I'm gonna go ahead and type in my name and I'm gonna turn this up so you can see kind of what I'm doing. And this is just a regular text box. It doesn't need to be anything crazy. When I go back to my selection, I can choose what grid I want it to go on. So if I choose orange, for example, and I drag, it's gonna orientate itself on that grid. Now, this might be a little smaller than I want. So when I'm on here, I can actually grab this and drag and change. If I hold down the shift key, it's gonna keep it in perspective and it's gonna allow me to adjust and move around on this grid. So you can pretty much put anything you want on this perspective grid and it will change the orientation of that grid. For example, if I switch to the blue side, the left intersect grid, and I've activated my ellipse tool, if you watch, see how it's gonna draw it on this side? Um, this gives you a lot of potential for how you can draw and create more three-dimensional objects than what you would be able to create independently. The grid allows you to do um, some neat things without having to think through the geometry of it. So I think this is just a really neat thing. Um, you can also grab things and delete things just like you normally would. The grid will not interfere with what you're trying to do. However, one of the things you do have to think about is I can't just randomly switch. See, I can't just switch this to this grid um, it doesn't quite work like that. So you do have to think about once you get it here, it's not going to place quite maybe the way you would want it to place normally due to that perspective. And then you kind of have to manipulate it more once you've got it placed on the other grid. So me personally, I like to think through what I'm going to place on my perspective grid so that I ensure that I am not having to spend a lot of time manipulating things. One of the neat things that I like to use this for is if I want to draw buildings or like a cityscape, maybe I want something to go on a corner, you have that ability. You just have to pay attention to what plane you're on so that as you're drawing on this, you can ensure that you are creating on the correct plane. Again, to get out of it, you just have to close and hide the grid. The other way you can turn this on is underneath the view menu perspective, and then you can show one point, two point perspective, you can show all these different types of viewpoints. You also can determine whether it's gonna to snap to that grid or not. So that's just a really neat option. For yours, you just need to put your name, first and last name, one on one side of the perspective panel and one on the other, just to show me you can manipulate both sides of that panel. For the reflect, the warp, twirl, all of these, I'm gonna let you explore these on your own because they do very similar things to the ones we've already covered. The only thing I am gonna make sure I show you is I'm gonna show the twirl tool, which is right here. The default on the twirl can be a little high on the intensity. I like to turn this down personally to about 10 or 20 in order to make it more effective. Because when you twirl, if your intensity is too high, and I'll turn it up so you can see what I mean by that, and you twirl, your object becomes almost unrecognizable. With most of these tools, the intensity needs to be turned down so that they're a little bit more easy to use. The other one I am gonna show you is the warp tool. The warp tool allows you to almost kind of similarly do what we did with a puppet warp, but without pins. So I can literally pull up, kind of think of this as like your gradient mesh grid and adjust an object independently by just kind of pulling and dragging. Now again, you can change the intensity here. My intensity is maybe a little high um, in order to manipulate it. I will say with this tool, less is more in my opinion. Um, but just manipulate these just to show me that you can use them. Same with the reflection tool, um, which lives, I apologize, under the transform tool. That one just kind of reflects objects um, without having to again, right click and free transform. You're gonna discover what pucker and bloat and scallop, crystallize and wrinkle do. They all do very similar things, but you'll see what they do. 
For outer glow and feather, these are also located under effects, stylize, outer glow. Outer glow just literally puts a glow around the whole thing and you can determine what color that is, how much it is. I will say that sometimes it takes a second to load, so just be patient. The feather will soften the edges of a object. So example, there's a three point. I'm gonna turn it up just so you can see. And as I zoom in, you can see that it kind of does a softening on the edges. This is one of those, it's a good option if you don't wanna blur everything and you just wanna soften your edges. The last one that I am gonna show you is number 12, the free transform in the rounded corners. I'm gonna start by rounding my corners first by under effect stylize and rounding corners. This effect does not work on a um, raster graphic. So if you try it on one of these others, it will not work. It has to be on a vector. And you can see it just kind of softened all my edges here and you can determine how much or how little. The free transform tool is a very valuable and useful tool. You first have the ability to just free distortly change and adjust things as you want to. The one that I use it for more often are these two, perspective distort and free distort. Perspective distort is gonna change the sides kind of in proportion to each other to change the perspective so it looks maybe like it's moving backwards in the image. The free transform, or excuse me, free distort allows you to manipulate just one anchor point at a time without having to double click and change things, which can be quite helpful depending on what it is you're doing. Once you've explored all of these different tools and you've explored the appearance panel and you put your name on it, go ahead and save your work and make sure you turn it in. Hopefully these are some great tools that you will find good uses for, but for no matter what, you will see these on the certification exams. So you wanna make sure that you've mastered them all. Thanks so much.